She is the author of the book, The Gender Trap, with the Gays Against Groomers group. They have come out with this book. Carla Curtis is the one who wrote this book, and she is here with us tonight. Carla, how are you this evening? I'm delighted to be on your show, Ford. Well, let's get right into it. So the right. book the book is called The Gender Trap. The, what- gender, the gender Trap, The Trans Agenda's War Against Children. Yes. Yes. And what I want to know is why is this the title of the book? Did you choose this title? Why is this the title of the book, The Gender Trap? That's a great question. I look at the craziness of what's going on today with children being convinced that they can be the opposite sex just by popping a pill and maybe getting some surgery and it's psychological and physical mutilation then we have uh, men declaring themselves to be women which is a biological impossibility and insinuating themselves into women's sport and taking away trophies that women had trained so hard to get and the whole basis of these errors of thinking is the conflation or the merging of sex with gender. When I was growing up and coming of age in the 1960s, there was a very distinct difference that was clearly understood between sex and gender. Sex is the biology, uh, what's between our legs, our secondary sex characteristic, uh, the kind of muscular strength someone has, the skeletal uh, framework, which is different from men and women, uh, facial hair, uh, developing of breasts, all those secondary sex characteristics. And gender was very clearly understood as the set of roles, behaviors, aspirations that our culture expects for men and women, which are different. And what happened in between about the 1980s and uh, very recently is that sex and gender have merged. So kids are growing up thinking that if, say, you have a feminine male, uh, a guy who's not into sport, maybe he's shy, maybe he likes classical music or things that are typically ascribed to, and I'm using this in quotes, the feminine realm then he must really be a girl. And conversely, if a girl is really muscular, very good athletically, what people call a tomboy, uh, short hair, low voice, she's convinced that she must be a boy. And as far-fetched as that seems, you have a whole uh, population of gay kids who have been especially brainwashed into believing this. So, hence the transgendering of children is disproportionately happening in the gay community, sadly, as well as autistic kids and kids who don't feel that they fit in. And there, there are all other subpopulations that have been subject to believing that they're transgender. But the gender trap is the, again, Uh, the mixing up of sex with gender. And it's shocking to me as a woman who had been in the second wave feminist movement that there can be such a retrogression of these concepts because when I was growing up, uh, if I was relating uh, romantically to a boy, I knew I was a girl. If I was uh, relating romantically to a girl, I still knew I was a girl. There was no question about what my sexual identity was. But this isn't the case for kids who are growing up today. And the damage that's being done to children is off the scale. All right. So you can buy this book. It's available right now. The website is thegendertrap.com. Were you going to write this book and the Gays Against Groomers got involved? Or how did this deal or how did they become a part of this book? Or are you in the group, uh, Gays Against Groomers? How, How did they come into this? Well, initially, I set about writing this book four years ago, and after two years took a brief hiatus. I didn't really know the direction that the book would go in or who would publish it. I just knew that it needed to be written. And then after a brief intermission, I approached the group because 
In my research okay. of writing the book, I came upon the Gays Against Groomers website, and they state very clearly, we are members of the gay community, and we oppose the medicalization and the mutilization of children. And I thought, this is a really cool group. So I approached them, and they read the manuscript and loved it, and published it, and I eventually joined the group because I completely am behind what they stand for, and they're activists, they're really committed and organized in what they believe in and what they do. All right, so let's get into the book, and their website is gaysagainstgroomers.com. They're also on uh, Instagram, they're on X. You can find them, but their website is gaysagainstgroomers.com, and you can buy the book at uh, thegendertrap.com. All right, let's get into the book. I have a copy. Thank you very much. You sent me an advanced copy. I've had it for a few weeks now. I really appreciate that. You made me feel important. So uh, a (laughs) a popular term that uh, you'll see in TikTok videos, you'll see in other social media posts, is assigned sex everyone's talking about assigned sex and for those of you who don't know that is the terminology that the lgbtq transgender deal is is calling what you're born as so example i would say that my assigned sex at birth was the man Uh, and then carla yours would be your assigned sex was you know female so right. this, and you get into this in the book, and let's just say, and I'm going to tee it up for you here, Carla, you disagree with the term assigned sex. Tell us why. Well, assigned sex is ridiculous. Nobody can assign a sex to person. That assumes that you can change your sex as easily as you would slip on a different coat. Uh, your sex is what it is. Only nature or God, if you are going from that framework, can assign your sex. Your sex is what you are. And the trans activist movement is very clever in using that word because it, again, convinces young people especially that they can choose what sex they are, which is totally false, but it's a good, I mean, it's a clever, it's insidious mental manipulation because then, say, if you have a girl who is um, going through puberty and it's very difficult for most adolescents, whether you're male or female, your body goes through hormonal changes, you have all of these sexual impulses that uh, that are surging through your body, you feel awkward, you're developing in all kinds of ways to become an adult. And it's very tempting to say, well, my assigned sex was female if I'm a girl or male if I was a boy, but that's not the real sex that I am. They misassigned me. So you have all of these terms that are being used to convince people that biology is not innate and that biology can be overturned or overridden by a simple declaration and a decision that you would rather be the opposite sex. I mean, you could, we can all play pretend. And that's kind of right. what, what it all boils down to. It's when I see a dude with a beard and he's wearing dresses and he's wearing makeup and he's like, I'm a woman. And I'm like, you have a beard. What are you? You're a man. You could play dress up. We could pretend. All right. You dive also in this book into the uh, sex role uh, stereotypes. You mentioned it earlier. How are some of these stereotypes playing a role in, in this war on gender and sex? You know, the stereotypes. You mentioned it earlier. Uh, boys can't have feelings because that's gay. Because I'm one of those people that believe in that. I'm like, oh, that guy's crying. He's gay. And then uh, in your book, you reference uh, w- women, you know, uh, aren't good at science or women don't make good scientists. I don't remember the exact wording. But right. what is uh, so the war on, on gender, on sex stereotypes here, at least in the Western civilization, uh, how are they playing a role? And and Carla, is it still OK if when a man cries, I say that's gay? 
Is that okay or that's not okay? I don't think that's okay anymore. Unfortunately, despite the inroads that women have made in the public arena uh, being um, promoted up the ladder in corporate situations or working outside the home, being in politics, and men staying home to caretake the children, what we have seen is uh, a real backlash of progress that had been made in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, where these attitudes that men are a certain way or should be a certain way, and women are a certain way or should be a certain way, is still very much alive. And that's why I devote an entire second chapter to sexual stereotype. And I, what I do is I quote many, I quote hundreds of studies from uh, 2017, uh, 2021. I mean, these are not outdated, archaic studies. These are new studies that have been uh, made where people still believe that women are frivolous, compliant, nice, and men are leaders and a uh, strength of character and decisive. And there are many more adjectives that I state in my book from a number of studies. And oh, going along what you said, uh, real boys don't cry. And that is crippling to males. It stunts them emotionally. It's homophobic. Oh my God, if I'm a male and I cry, my friends will call me a sissy and they might think I'm gay. And heaven forbid if the boy is actually gay, he has a real tough road ahead of him. And similarly with girls, if girls are strong and assertive, believe it or not, that is still not okay in today's culture. Now, there may be pockets where people would say, I don't get it. I don't feel that way. But studies have shown that a majority may very well believe that. And when you look at these kids who are being uh, brainwashed, it, it bears out. And not only kids, uh, there's one uh, very famous uh, transgender person. Uh, she was born Kelly King. She became Scott Nugent. And per person is very courageously speaking up against the mutilation of children. And Scott says in his public spe uh, speeches that if I, who was a very assertive lesbian, could be convinced that that was not okay and that I must be a man, then children have no chance at resisting the brainwashing. And so we have, fortunately, a number of transgendered people or detransitioners, which is people who have started to switch over to what they think they can be, which is the opposite sex, and then they realize it's a mistake, so they revert back. So that's detransitioning. And they're saying how lulled they were into this horrible mindset that they were not okay the way they were. So what the trans activist movement is doing is instead of encouraging people to expand their mind and encompassing a whole range of behaviors that are acceptable for either men or women or boys and girls, they're saying, oh, you can't be that way. You must be the opposite sex, which they call gender. So that's largely how they're convincing kids to uh, transition and go on hormones and ultimately Many of them do uh, have surgery. They have their genitals hacked off, reshaped, remolded. It's, and it's a terrible thing to do to somebody, not to mention the horrible effects that taking cross-sex hormones does to a person. Cross-sex hormones refers to, I mean, every, every body produces all of the hormones. For males and females, it's just in different amounts. So the common nomenclatures that we call them male hormones or female hormones, but really they're just hormones, they're just different amounts. So you have, say, a girl whose body is does produce a little testosterone from the adrenal glands. It's not much, but it's there. And then this girl takes 20 times the amount of testosterone that her body produces or is meant to to handle. And yes, of course, she'll get facial hair. Her muscle mass will shift. 
she'll get stronger muscles, but it'll also affect her brain, her mental capacity, and a whole lot of other uh, systemic uh, functions, which I detail in my book, and it'll change her. And there are so many quote-unquote side effects from these cross-sex hormones. For instance, men who take extra estrogen which their bodies were not meant to process. They're subject to two and a half times the rate of of cardiac failure, bones that are brittle and break. Uh, The list goes on and on and on. So these drugs, and they are drugs, are dangerous. Carla, there is a chapter dedicated to transgenders in sports. And boy, if I didn't have the Gays Against Groomers on the show on July 25, turn around 24 hours later, the opening, or less than 24 hours later, the opening ceremony for the Olympics. And then all we heard for two weeks was that there's male boxers beating up women boxers and XY chromosomes. I haven't heard so much chromosome talk in my life. But, but I want to ask you this. Why is wanting biological women to compete against the biological women, why is that considered anti-LGBT? I want to first make a distinction between lesbian, gay, bisexual community and the LGBTQ, etc. Adding the a T for transgender and Q for queer really changes the picture. What's happened is that the transgender activist movement has appropriated the lesbian, gay, and bisexual community. Originally, LGB was simply we wanted to be included in a normal life have the same rights as heterosexuals, you know, being able to get married, adopt kids, share finances. If we were recognized as legal partners, we would be allowed in a hospital room if our partner got sick and not uh, uh, discluded uh, because, uh, you know, we weren't quote-unquote family. So... But what happened was the transgender activists have usurped the gay community in general and have said, well, we're part of it, and if you're against transgendering or transgenders, you're against lesbians, gays, and bisexuals. And that is far from the case. It's just not true. That's why Gays Against Groomers states very clearly we do not subscribe to the mutilation of children done in our name. So that's just uh, trans activist propaganda. In truth, women and men are very different physiologically, biologically, and uh, physically. Uh, Men have uh, stronger bones, even their pelvis their gait is different because the uh, hip joint is angled differently. Men are not only stronger, but they have different muscle fibers. Men have a greater oxygen carrying capacity in their red blood cells. They have better cardiovascular endurance. The lung capacity is far superior to that of women. So the whole reason that women were given their own place in sports was so that they would have a level playing field. And now, it, just because men are saying, oh, I identify as a woman, I'm really a woman, you have biological reality being thrown in the trash basket so men can compete against women, which is very unfair, not to mention, as you pointed out, dangerous now i know we're way over time so this is it right here this is the last question for you so uh, someone buys this book from the gendertrap.com you can buy the book right now the gendertrap.com carla curtis what do you hope somebody who reads this book what do you hope he she they them pansexual gender fluid mental illness whatever what do you hope <laughs> that they get out of it 
when they finish this book? I want people to understand the depth to which biology has been weakened and disappeared and the extent to which people are allowing themselves to fall into the trans agenda uh, because they mistakenly believe that women and men psychologically are so different. People are allowing their very archaic viewpoints about what constitutes being male and what constitutes being female to make them think that they have to change their bodies. And that's far from the case. I have over a thousand references in this book. Uh, I back up every single thing I say because I don't want anybody to say, oh, well, that's just her opinion. There are tons of studies, as I mentioned earlier, that cite how people uh, are so easily convinced that they can't have a wide spectrum of behaviors. And the truth is, as several studies in the book show, if you pick woman at random, she has a 40% chance of having the mental abilities of what we would typically label masculine and vice versa for a man. 40% chance that a man would have what we call a feminine brain. So the whole concept of male brains or female brains turns out to be meaningless. Yet people believe that if they are, if they fall along one end of the spectrum or another in what we still insist are masculine or feminine traits, that means that they have to have a body to match. And you don't need to change your body. Just expand your perception and acceptance of what it means to be male and female. And you don't have to go through all that heartache and mutilation, especially when it comes to our kids. It, to, to do that to children is criminal. Leave those kids alone, right, Carla? Right. Pink Floyd said it best. It's the thegendertrap.com, Gays Against Groomers, Carla Curtis. The book is called The Gender Trap. I again want to thank you for coming on the show tonight. And uh, again, I hope I, I wish nothing but success with this book. I have it. I'm going to read all of it. I promise, Carla. By the way, I just want to make a quick comment. There are a few titles out that are called a gender trap, so make sure that you get the right one. Subtitle is The Trans Agendas War Against Children. So it's not only available on the gendertrap.com, but you can also get it from gazeagainstgroomers.com. And it's soon coming to Amazon, right? We're working on it. All right, beautiful. Carla, thank you again for your time. Wish you nothing but the best. Thank you very much, Ford. It's time for the 